Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. A lot of great stories in today's episode. All of those stories will be timestamped down below as always. Let's hop into our first story though, and it's actually going to be a story that might make a lot of you guys angry out there about some, you know, I don't know, some, some of these coaches out there, some of these owners of organizations who really don't understand how to act in some situations. We actually have Team Moyer Invictus and their owner who's been accused of several things in the past. We'll touch on that in a, in a little bit here as well, but actually accused a few days ago of threatening other Mountain Dew League players, not even his own players, but threatening players of other other teams out there. He actually threatened a player known as Strong Legs from a team known as Team Good People. This same guy, Strong Legs, is actually a former coach of French Canadians. That was Sabrosa's team who actually made it to the American minor and then unfortunately couldn't make it due to visa issues. So to give you guys a background of him, actually a pretty well-known coach out there in the, uh, in the lower tier North American scene. On top of that though, he was apparently threatened multiple times by this Invictus Moyer owner to not stream Mountain Dew League matches. Now apparently the threats extended not only to this player but also to ESCA itself and eventually unfortunately enough this actually led to the team itself being banned and kicked from Mountain Dew League altogether. Now the real unfortunate part about this is we actually have strong legs coming out on Reddit and saying how how sorry he was. Of course he came forward with this accusation. He actually released all the information to ESCA who eventually banned the whole team and the organization itself. Of course that does hurt the owner who was actually you know of course making the, th the threats himself but it also hurts the players and you guys obviously know that as well. He felt very bad for doing this and I want to know what you guys think about this. Was this the right thing to do? Do you feel bad for the players? I certainly do. But by the way Strong Legs reacted, you can tell the player felt bad for what he did. But on, on, you know, when you're an owner of an organization like this, no matter how small or how big, you really have to respect everyone else out there, especially ESCA themselves. If you're an owner and you're willing to go out and talk like this, you're going to have some backlash. So although I do feel bad for the players, hopefully some other owners out there will see their talent and see how, how well they were doing or decently well they were doing in Mountain Dew League itself and hopefully pick these guys up. And on top of that, this owner has actually been accused of several things in the past talking trash about other pro players out there not paying out salaries so maybe it's for the best people talking about this maybe it's for the best these players actually leave the organization he's been accused several times of not paying out salaries and the list does go on and on on top of that he's also called out several people on Twitter and also if you guys remember it from our last Fragadelphia actually I think it was two Fragadelphias ago this past summer they were the team that was called out publicly on Twitter for recharging back their entry fee so they paid the hundred dollar entry fee yes a super super cheap entry fee and then once they were out of the tournament they charged it back they were called up publicly and then the owner itself had to go and pay that back so kind of an embarrassment for the organization hopefully those players do find a new place to go but that was in our first story for CSGO news today but even in bigger news out there guys and this story is kind of just shocking I never thought I'd actually be sitting here reporting on a story like this it does seem according to decay and other sources out there like Jacob Wolf from ESPN themselves so very official sources out there that Cleveland Cavaliers if you guys are not aware of this an NBA team actually have huge investment into the esports scene right now they've actually also bought a League of Legends NALCS spot. So again, they have a lot of backing, a lot of money themselves. And according to the, these guys and the many sources out there, they might be trying to buy the Benched Immortals trio. Of course, Henny, Lucas, K, and G being that trio. They could also buy out FNX and maybe Phelps in the future. Who knows? They could make a very dominant Brazilian team. And they are not weary. They're not afraid to spend money, guys. And the rumors go on and on about their buyouts. It could be anywhere from $600,000 to a million dollars just for these three players, which is an insane buyout. I'm sure many of you guys are aware of this, but the rumors are very strong. So please watch out for the future guys we could have an organization or a team picking this trio up and as of right now as well if you guys are not aware of this they actually announced Nade Shot as their lead director of activities for this team and for their League of Legends team as well obviously Nade Shot very well known in the esports scene coming from Call of Duty uh, probably knows a lot more about the scene than other players out there and probably being paid very well by Cleveland to actually run this organization he also has his own organization known as 100 Thieves they have their own Call of Duty team so who knows if this new trio with the Brazilian players if they're picked up if they'll play under that 100 Thieves name if they do who really it doesn't really matter whatever name they play under or whatever organization Cleveland Cavaliers names as their esport organization that will be their name their team name going forward if this does go through so leave a comment down below what you guys think about that uh, we all knew that sometime soon or sometime in the near future these guys would be bought out and I would not doubt it to be an expensive or and well-paying organization like Cleveland Cavaliers to actually go ahead and do that now on top of that even more rumors out there I know I've been talking a lot about rumors these should be confirmed though sometime soon allegedly about tomorrow today is November 5th on the 6th or 7th this should be finally confirmed. The electronic and C swap, of course, Navi and Flipside having a swap out there. Several players and owners out there have confirmed this will be happening. A long-term buyout of electronic by Navi. Who knows what long-term means though? And they will be lose, losing one member of their own Navi lineup. Apparently, as of right now, it might be seized or some other player, and they will acquire Flipside star player electronic. And this is actually a slip-up done by Simple on his stream. You guys can tell by his reaction. It's pretty much all but confirmed right now. And there's also many other sources out there that are confirming this move. But here's what Simple 
said or actually did on his live stream, which obviously gave it away. You guys can spot the, the flip side. You'll see. Oh, fuck. <laughs> And also in other news, many of you guys care, McSkillet is back. I'm actually a huge fan of McSkillet's videos. I'm sure many of you guys have known the, the budding heads we've done in the past with me and McSkillet. But I actually really do enjoy his videos. He is now back, apparently, and also promising two to three videos a week. So we'll see if he actually sticks that out, guys, or becomes one of those people who kind of just, you know, says he's going to be back, and then all of a sudden he drops off the map for another four months. So hopefully McSkillet is back for sure. I do actually really enjoy his content. But now on to our very last stories for today's episode of CSGO News. And that's actually a very important thing going on right now. The European and American miners are going on all this morning. I'm trying to get this video out as soon as possible. So if you guys want to, you can actually watch the finals of the North American Miner as of right now. It should be Liquid and CLG playing it out for that final spot. For all of you guys who are actually big fans of who actually goes to the major qualifier, for the European side of things, the last two spots did go to Envious and Space Soldiers and not Optic. It was actually Space Soldiers who first beat them in a best of three and Envious this morning actually 2-0 swept Optic. We had tweets from Mixwell from that. Actually a very disappointing thing. Of course, their first year together, their first few months together, people expecting them to actually try and go through and actually have a good chance too and they played very well against Space Soldiers a very close series there unfortunately enough this morning against Envious their last chance they could not go through so Envious and Space Soldiers take your last two European minor spots into the major qualifier and on top of that the last two American spots the first of which is a huge surprise will go to Team Misfits incredibly strong they actually took over Liquid and CLG to gain that spot we saw this out of nowhere throughout the past year this is probably the biggest surprise I've seen in a long time is this roster has done very little over the past year or so so congrats to Sean Garrett Shazam and his squad over there. Misfits has qualified for the major qualifier. I think for the first time, maybe I'm that, maybe that's incorrect. On top of that, though, the second team joining them will be between Liquid and CLG. Like I said previously, that match should be going on right now, and that'll be a best of three matchup to determine who actually goes. It would be incredible to not see Liquid go through the major qualifier, but see a team like Misfits go instead. So we'll see what happens, guys. Pay attention to that, and thank you all for watching. And here's one last thing that I have to tell you. And that's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News. As always, thank you guys for leaving a comment down below, and maybe even leaving a like. Please leave a comment on today's episode, guys. I promised you I'd reply to all my comments on last video, but I fell behind had a group product to do So please leave a comment right now guys And I promise you I'll try my best to actually reply to those comments and talk to you guys down there now on top of that I also want to kind of uh, tell you guys something I wasn't gonna tell you what uh, I made a big change here on YouTube If you guys did notice I know a lot of you guys do use ad block I really I don't care about that You know YouTube ad revenue is gonna be bad no matter what but I did go ahead and actually turned on more ads for these videos So if more ads did pop up. I hope it didn't offend any of you I'm trying to make a little bit more YouTube ad revenue because I have no sponsor. I've had no sponsor for the last week and a half or so and probably won't anytime soon in the future. So I hope you guys don't mind uh, with YouTube ad revenue being terrible. I've never had non-skippable ads in my videos. I've never had really mid-roll ads. I went ahead and tried to turn those on for all my videos. So I hope you guys understand. I'm trying to make a little bit of extra money so these videos are actually making me something towards my education. But I hope you guys understand that. And if you guys don't, leave a com leave an angry comment down below why you why I shouldn't do that because I'd love to argue with you. Now as always, hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you all in a couple more days with another weekend recap of CS Good News. If you guys did enjoy, leave a comment down below, and I will see you all then. Remember, my name is Jake. Remember, I like you, and uh, okay, well, <laughs> goodbye.